we're going to start with isosceles triangle ABC. Now, I haven't put in the tick marks yet, but uh, they're all coming. Now, I haven't, um, well, we have to make something clear. First off, every triangle has three bases, and every triangle has, oops, three vertices. However, uh, when we discuss isosceles triangles, the vertex is considered to be the side adjacent to the two congruent sides, and the base will be the opposite side. So that's just a little peculiar for isosceles for our discussion. So let's start out with this really neat theorem, base angles theorem. Base angles theorem tells us that if, well, right here, if two ang if, um, well, let me put it in there. If these two sides are congruent, then these two base angles are congruent. As an example, right there, if I've got a proof with these two, I can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle C. Pretty handy. Now, just like you've had before, we have some shorthand that we can use. This shorthand, if you remember the old textbook, if you're a teacher of this course, you remember that. Please, just write this. Just write Theorem 4.7 in this diagram, and that says it all. Now, let's have a look here at um, converse of the base angles theorem. Just as you'd expect, if I start here with congruent angles, and say, okay, if these two angles B and C are congruent, then these two sides are congruent. And my shorthand would look just like this. Again, just write this. Just put this on your theorem 4.8 and everyone will know what you're talking about. Now, all right, let's get to something more interesting. Let's, um, let's look at a visual proof of these two theorems really quick. So I'm gonna prove these both by, um, well, I'm gonna take this triangle like this, I'm gonna shade it. I'm going to start. I'm first proving. I'm proving the first theorem over here. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to. Do a, whoa! Oh yeah, we know this isosceles triangle. I know it's congruent to its own reflection. So BAC is congruent to CAB, and you can see that by side, side, side. Oops, leave that up there. Obviously, the third side would be BC is congruent to itself by the reflexive property, but you're just looking at it to get um, to get a feel for it. So you've got side, side, side there. Then by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, the two base angles are congruent. Hey, that's pretty neat. So right away, we've proven this theorem that quick. That quick, that's fun. So let me see if I can reconfigure this drawing. And let's let's clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with congruent angles. And I know this triangle is still congruent to its own reflection. This time, it's going to be angle side angle. Well, look at that. Triangle BAC. And we, because we got, again, sharing this side here, congruent to itself. And we've got angle side angle. Hmm. And if I can say, by angle side angle that the two triangles are congruent. I can use corresponding parts of congruent triangles to say this. So we've proven this theorem. We've proven this theorem. Well, let's make use of the two theorems we've just learned. We've got one diagram. We have four exercises, three through six in your textbook. We'll start right away on number three. If I'm given these two sides congruent, well, let's make sure I'm looking at this triangle. This is an easy one, the overall triangle AED. And I could conclude that the angles A and D are congruent. Theorem 4.7 is a base angles theorem. You could read it in words, but after a while you'll get so used to it, you'll want to write it in symbols like we do here. I would just write Theorem 4.7 and draw this diagram. Makes sense to me. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on to the next one here. So I'll I'm going to clean up this diagram a little bit here. But I'm going to change the picture. Change the picture slightly. I'm going to move the vertex E down there. And you'll see why in a little bit. Because I'm trying to make it more realistic. I'm given that these two segments are congruent. 
Well, if those two segments are congruent, I'm looking at this triangle. And of course, it's the very same theorem that I had before. This is still the base angles theorem, 4.7, because I have two congruent sides. If I have those two congruent sides, then the result is a pair of congruent base angles. So in this case, in, the, in this isosceles triangle here, the vertex is B and the base is AE. Okay, and if I was putting down symbols, I'd still write this. That symbol, or that is theorem 4.7 in our little shorthand. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Clean up the drawing. And let's say these are my two givens. Well, if those are my givens, I'm looking at this triangle. And again, this would be the vertex, and this would be the base. Since those two angles are adjacent to the base, we call them base angles. So now I could conclude if the base angles are congruent, so are their opposing sides, or let's just write down theorem 4.8 right there. Again, this is my triangle. I've got congruent base angles. That makes the opposite sides congruent. Theorem 4.8 which is the converse of 4.7. And I would just write it right here by taking my symbols, and you see I write them in the opposite order. If, if I read this, if base angles are congruent, then opposite sides are congruent. Okay, we'll clean this one up. Clean up the drawing. And again, I'm going to change the drawing slightly. I'm going to go back to this original version. And I'll say, what about these two angles? And now we're obviously talking about this diagram or this triangle. And it should be clear to see that I'm still looking at the converse of the base angles theorem. I've got congruent base angles. That gives me congruent sides. So now well, let's see. Well, where's my conclusion? Come on, conclusion. Um, got lost here. There, there we go. Okay, so EB is congruent to EC, and that would be it. We're all, we're all finished, and that's one diagram, and you've had four exercises. So let's get the hang of that. Well, here we go on 13 and 14. Let's do some algebra. But first, we'll review our definitions, or vocabulary, more like it. Again, as we said, every triangle has three vertices, but in an isosceles triangle, I'm going to refer to this side as the vertex. I'm going to refer to this side as the base, and I'm going to refer to these other two sides as the legs. I'll do the same thing over here. I've got the base here. I've got a leg here. I've got a leg here. And C will be the vertex. So let's start on the left here. I'm given two congruent angles, base angles, because they're adjacent to the base. Theorem 4.8, which is the converse of the base angles theorem, tells me this. Look at this, no words, just diagram. Base angles congruent, that means the opposite sides are congruent. That will what we will call the legs. So I'll put the tick marks there to say that KL is congruent to JL. Set up my algebra, pretty easy. All you really had to know is that this is equal to this and not the 16. So do I have to really solve this? Come on, algebra one, you've got it. Now, I'll go back over here on the right on number 14 here, and I can see I'm going to use the base angles theorem because after all, I've got two congruent legs that makes the angles or the base angles congruent. So I'll mark them like that base angles are congruent. And there I'll set up my algebra. I think it's pretty straightforward. You didn't have many other choices. If nine X's are 72, I guess each one is nine. So there you go. A little vocabulary, a little algebra. Well, these are some real thinking questions, 26 through 29. You've got this interesting diagram that you've all copied down. And you've got these sides, five, seven, two, respectively. And You've got the x, y, and z, the variables for our angle measures. 
and we're asked a series of questions, four questions to see if these numbers, all angle measures, are possible. Let's get right to it. I suppose we'll start with the most obvious thing, our theorem 4.7, which tells us, well, I've got isosceles triangles here, so the two blue angles are congruent. Got an isosceles triangle here, so the two green angles are congruent. Don't worry, you'll see what that uh, Z is up to there in a little bit. But we're going to start with the first one. And right away, I'm looking at this overall triangle. It's got sides of 7, 7, and the two blue angles would have to be 90. Well, that's crazy because I know you can't, you can't have two 90-degree angles in a triangle. Just can't do it. Well, not in Euclidean geometry, at least. So let's, let's move on to the next one. 27 should be a little bit more exciting. Okay, I've taken these numbers right here, and I'm looking at this triangle. This triangle here, and I'm redrawing it over here. If the blue angle is indeed 40, and this angle is 36, this angle is 72. Where that comes from is the vertical angles right here. See those vertical angles? Right. So now we've got to look at I've got to look at these two angles together, make the base angle of this other. See this isosceles triangle here because you've got seven, you've got five plus two which is seven. So I can find this base angle here of that isosceles triangle, and theorem four point seven says it's forty plus thirty six, which is seventy six. So. I've got that, and now I just change my focus. Instead of looking at this triangle, let's look at this one. Add up these three angles and tell me what you get. Well, you know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't know what you get, but I can tell you what you don't get. You don't get 180. Just like adding up the last digits, 6, 6, and 2 is not, uh, is not 10. So um, right there, that cannot be. Theorem 4.1 says the interior angles of the measure, or interior angle measures of a triangle are 180 degrees, and that is not 180. So this tells me these three measures are impossible for this diagram. Well, now you're getting the hang of it. Let's do another one. 28. Well, this one is a little more straightforward, and it's, let me see, if x and y are equal, then this triangle is the same as this triangle. If there were both 25, then these two would be congruent. Well, that doesn't make sense if x and y are the same, 5 and 7 are not the same. So I'm going to say it's impossible. Um, if x equals y, then these two lengths would have to be identical. Can't be done. Well, that was easy. Get another one. Gosh, let me see. We're, oh, we're 0 for 3 so far. Let's see if we can get a little more momentum here. And our last one. Hey, same diagram we had before. We'll take this one, just like 27. I'll take this triangle and move it over here. This time, I've got a 42 and a 33. And I know that my, um, let me see, my theorem, let me see, I just add out those angles. Oh yeah, that theorem. My base angle theorem tells me that 33 plus 42 is indeed 75. And now all I've got to do is add these three up together and see if that works for this triangle. And I'll be, we finally have got one that's, that does seem to work. Now that just means that this is a possibility, so this uh, triangle of this shape could exist. That was fun. 